welcome to the first DVCC group nutrition presentation. This is a um, follow-up from the first group nutrition um, seminar that hopefully you've been able to attend. If not, this will be a great recap or a, sorry, a great intro into what the presentation was all about. Now, I've got we've got three goals with um, these presentations. Um, the first one being that we would really like you to learn from each other. You'll all be able to bring different um, things to the, to the to the group discussion, um, maybe different recipes, different experiences, and that way you'll all be able to learn from each other. Number two is that we want you to all help each other reach your goals. So it's been proven that um, by having uh, group uh, interaction and other people um, knowing your goals and helping you trying to achieve them, you're far more likely to achieve them. So we'd really like you all to really look out for each other, um, the others that are in your group, and really take an interest in how each of you are doing uh, and really try and help each other as much as you can. The third thing is that we want you to realize that you aren't alone. A lot of the time um, people can, you can find that um, you think that you're the only per person having trouble maybe um, eating what you, you know you want to or what you should be eating um, and it's, sometimes it's a struggle, other, th other things in life get in the way and we want you to realize that you aren't alone. This is quite normal. Um, this does happen from time to time and that you shouldn't um, beat yourself up over it and that hopefully in this group session you're going to be able to find out that there's a lot of other people that will be going through the same struggles and, and that way you'll be able to help each other get through those, um, those difficulties. Now let's begin the presentation. I want to go over um, what a lot of people have, been, have grown up with uh, and that is the typical food pyramid. So this is where a lot of us have or have got our um, nutrition information from in the past. It's as you can see at the bottom there we have uh, bread, cereal, rice and pastas. Um, slightly higher we have some vegetables and fruits. Above that some milk, yogurt and cheese and then uh, a small amount of meat, poultry, fish uh, and other sorts of protein sources with um, a sparing amount of fats, oils and sweets at the top. This is the um, typical food pyramid that um, is being taught to to everyone uh, means that we will uh, basically rely a lot more on um, breads, cereals, rices and pastas for um, our or our energy. I've broken it down here as you can see it's 6 to 11 servings of grains a day, um, 3 to 5 servings of vegetables, um, some fruits, a little small amount of meat or um, protein sources, uh, again the same amount of dairy and then a few fats, oils and sweets. Now there is an issue with this food, food pyramid and that is that the advice was actually flawed. Now, I wanted to just go over the um, the reasons this food pyramid is not optimal for well for number one health but also for um, body composition e.g. losing fat and or um, having muscle tone. Now the first reason is that carbohydrates whilst um, um, have been um, in this food pyramid showed to be very good. That's why they form the base of the whole pyramid. And uh, the things like pasta, bread and, and other carbohydrate sources. Whilst fats have been shown to be bad and that's why they're at the top of the pyramid and used very sparingly. Now what else was wrong with the food pyramid? As you can see it also promoted a high intake of pasteurized milk. Now there's a lot of studies on milk um, and a lot of these studies actually show that um, pasteurized milk um, can actually increase um, certain disease risks. Now there is further research needed and this doesn't apply to everyone. A lot of people um, respond poorly to milk whilst maybe a few um, find that it doesn't upset their stomach or anything like that. Now the reason a lot of people uh, respond negatively to pasteurized milk is um, of something called lactose intolerance. Now this has uh, also been uh, linked with certain cancers as well as the fact that milk drinking does not even seem to offer 
protection against osteoporosis, which is one of its main benefits that it's been sold on. Um, and their studies prove that it's not actually um, an effective way to avoid osteoporosis, although fruit and vegetable consumption has been proven to uh, help avoid um, thinning of the bones, um, which we call osteoporosis. Further problems with the, the standard typical uh, food pyramid are that there's no nutrient timing. When I talk about nutrient timing, what I mean is that there is no no time there where it's said it's best to eat certain types of food, e.g. carbohydrates, um, when it's actually been proven that there is a, an optimal time to eat something like carbohydrates where it has a large role in uh, recovery and also in losing fat. So as you're going to learn today, when we eat our carbohydrates is very, very important. So it's not a case of necessarily cutting them down or taking them out of your diet completely. It's a case of putting them um, in your day around about exercise. So as I've gone through the standard food pyramid, the standard way that we've all been brought up to think of food and its um, problems, I'd like to introduce what we call Double Vision Conditioning Center's My Plate. Now this is based on um, a precision nutrition format. Precision Nutrition is the um, number one resource for um, up-to-date and cutting-edge nutrition information. And it goes along the lines of um, a plate of food. This is not the first time that plates of food examples have been used to demonstrate how we should be eating, but this is the most up-to-date and most effective way there is um, for health and for fat loss. Now, what it does is introduce what to eat and drink, when to eat it, and how much to eat. Now, to explain, as I mentioned earlier, exercise plays a really big role in energy expenditure, expenditure i.e. how much energy we burn, how many calories we burn, and how your body reacts to the food that you eat. Therefore, we need to have two different sorts of plates. One for when we haven't exercised, and one for, when, one for when we have just exercised. Now, these plates are a way to really visualize what your plate of food should be looking like, and at what time of day, e.g. if you've just exercised or not. Now, the first um, plate is an anytime meal. So, we break up meals into anytime meals, basically meals you can have whether you've worked out or not throughout the day, whenever you'd like and we also will break them down further into post-workout meals. So starting with the anytime meal, this is literally for all your meals not directly after a workout. Now as you can see it involves protein including red meat, chicken, fish, eggs or vegetarian sources, veggies which include a wide variety of different sorts of vegetables and then fats including healthy oils, nuts and seeds whilst we have some water or tea to drink. We'll then introduce the post-workout meal. This is your first meal after an intense workout. So, that's why it's called post-workout meal. And it involves slightly different um, types of food. So, we still have the same protein, including red meat, chicken, fish, eggs, or vegetarian sources. You can see that takes up half the plate. We then have veggies and fruit, including a wide variety of vegetables and some fruit whilst at the side there we have a small amount of starches including potatoes, pasta, rice or bread and again we have water or tea. Now, this is a plate for vegetarians. So vegetarians are a slightly different um, type of plate. Um, there is no post-workout plate as generally a vegetarian diet needs to have more carbohydrate purely um, as it doesn't, there is not as many lean um, sources of protein that a vegetarian is able to have. Therefore, they generally have more carbohydrate in their diet. So, this is a plant based eating plate where we have protein, plant proteins including beans and legumes. Now, I'm going to give you a list of um, different sorts of proteins and 
um, things like that later on and also you're going to receive um, a large number of recipes that follow along with this plan e.g. anytime meals or post-workout meals. So going back to the plant-based eating there's starches, a small amount of starches including sweet potatoes, potatoes, um, breads etc. A small number of fats including healthy oils, nuts and seeds and then as you see a large amount of veggies, um, half the plate including a wide variety of non-starchy vegetables, that's mainly green sorts of vegetables. And again, we have a small amount of fruit for dessert or only after exercise. Again, water and tea to drink. So now that I've given you an overview, overview of the different types of plates, I want to go uh, and introduce you to the five food habits. Now these are habits that I'd like you or we would all like you to um, think about whenever you're eating a meal. Now habit number one is to eat slowly and stop at 80% full. Now the reason for this is that many of us eat far too quickly and at each meal we expect to eat to the point of fullness. It's very important that you listen to your hunger and appetite cues so you don't carry on eating until you have to loosen your belt that would basically mean you've eaten too much. It takes about 20 minutes um, for our satiety mechanisms, basically the mechanisms that tell us when we're full, to kick in. Therefore, if we eat quickly, we're going to tend to eat a lot more, and that's actually been scientifically proven. The quicker you eat, the more you eat, the more calories you actually take in. An excellent goal is actually to make a meal last 15 to 20 minutes per meal. That's at a minimum. Now, I understand that this is probably quite a large order um, to start with and also um, there's times when you're, having, you're in a rush and you won't be able to spend that time. But if you know that when you can do, your aim is to really lengthen the meal. So to start with, if you try um, taking a seat when you do eat, slowing down, turning off any sort of distractions, TV and the like, and try to take smaller bites and to actually taste your food. So basically take a little bit more time over it. And the, to change your goal to eating until you're no longer hungry, instead of eating until you're full. A lot of us have trained ourselves to try and eat as much as we can, as quickly as we can. And like I said, you're going to end up eating a lot more calories doing it that way. On the other hand, if you are looking to put on weight, you are encouraged to eat faster and and until you're hundred percent full or more. So if you're looking to lose uh, weight the best thing to do is to not eat until you're full to eat until you're no longer hungry. However in the case for people that are looking to put on weight then you're obviously more you want to take in more calories therefore if you eat as quickly as possible you're going to be able to take in more calories because you won't realize your body won't realize it's full until you've taken in those calories. Habit number two, eat protein-dense foods with each meal. Now this area is somewhat controversial. There's a lot of misinformation around the consumption of protein. However, the research is pretty clear now. In healthy individuals, now it's important we use that word, in healthy individuals, a higher protein diet is completely safe. Let me repeat that. So in healthy individuals, a higher protein diet is completely safe. Plus, Protein plays a very important role for achieving the best health, body composition and performance. E.g. it's vital if we want to lose as much fat um, as possible and to actually be as healthy as possible. Now it's hard to achieve all three of these, um, these things, e.g. health, body composition and performance, if you're not taking in enough protein. Now how much is a, a portion of protein? Now, we're trying to simplify this for you, so we're going to do it visually. And it's basically one portion is the size of the palm of your hand. Now, obviously, everyone has different sizes of palm, but generally, your palm will relate to your height and things like that. So, if you go on your own palm, and that would be roughly 20 to 30 grams. Now, women should get one portion of protein per meal, which is 20 to 30 grams, as I said, and men should get two portions. So, that's two palms of your hand which is 40 to 60 grams. So every meal, if you just know that um, to have your protein intake optimal, 
you're going to look for, if you're a lady, a palm of um, your hand as the, the amount of protein you have, or if you're a man, two palms. So if you follow this advice, not only are you going to ensure an adequate intake of protein, but you're also going to stimulate meta your metabolism, as protein is very important in um, thermogenesis and basically burning more calories. Improve your muscle tone. Basically, your muscle can't actually survive if, it doesn't, if you don't have enough protein, e.g., um, you need to have protein in your diet if you want to have muscle tone, and also recovery and to reduce your body fat. Habit number three, eat vegetables with each meal. Now, a lot of us have, been, have grown up with this and we were actually taught that we should have vegetables, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have made a big effort to make sure that we do. Now, vegetables provide, uh, most people know that they're good for us, but they, the reason they are good for us is they provide micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals, and also plant chemicals, things like phytochemicals, that are essential for a proper healthy functioning of the body. However, they also provide what is called an alkaline load to the blood. That's where, basically, they counteract the acidity of protein and grains in the diet. Protein and grains are acid in the body. Now, it's not healthy for a body to be um, too acid. It, it wants to be around about neutral-ish. Um, so, too much acid um, actually results in bone, um, bone loss and loss of muscle mass as our body eats away at those two things to try and then neutralize the, the acid. So the more alkaline we can be and the better for our body, the healthier our bodies. So um, that's how I mentioned earlier that the most effective way to prevent osteoporosis is to actually keep an alkaline body and to do that we need to eat the right amount of vegetables. So like I mentioned Dairy has, not been, has been proven not to be effective at the prevention of osteoporosis. Eating enough vegetables has been shown to be effective as it alkalines the body. Now, this is an important um, habit, so to include at least two servings of fruit or all vegetable, and or vegetables per meal. So, to define a serving is one medium-sized fruit, which is about 100 grams raw chopped. Habit number four. For fat loss, eat a majority of other carbohydrates after exercise. If your goal is to lose fat, you have to earn those higher carbohydrates meal, meals by exercising first. So, as we refer back to the plates, there's the anytime plate and the post-workout plate. So, if your goal is to lose fat, you have to earn a post-workout plate. You can't eat that, um, that meal, that type of meal, unless you have exercised first. So if you want to eat things like um, bread, pasta, rice, or sugary foods, now we do um, suggest that they are all gluten-free if, you, if you'd like to eat them. You can eat them as long as you do two things. First of those two things is you focus more on unprocessed varieties, e.g. you're not buying unhealthy um, processed foods laden with trans fats and things like that, you're trying to buy unprocessed, so natural foods. Um, for example, a sweet potato is healthier than um, pasta and things like that. So you'll get a list of superfoods, the type of um, carbohydrate that we promote, um, but you're not actually um, not allowed to eat those foods, but you're very much encouraged to exercise first and to earn those types of foods. So the second thing as well is to, like I just mentioned, save most of them until after exercise. So if you ex the more you exercise, the more post-workout types of foods you're able to have. The less you exercise, the more anytime meals you, you need to have. Now this is controlled carbohydrate eating. It's not low carbohydrate eating, where you're eating carbohydrates in, in the, f but you're actually eating carbohydrates in the forms and at the times that your body can best tolerate. So if you're interested in fat loss, you still get most of your carbohydrates from vegetables and fruits, but with a small amount of starchy carbs after exercise. Um, just for those that are looking to gain weight, you should actually include more carbohydrates than I've, I've just recommended. So you can really try and 
eat a lot of carbohydrates in your post-workout meal. If you're looking for fat loss, a small amount of starchy carbs post-exercise is fine. Now, here's a little chart for uh, carbohydrate types for fat loss or for maintenance. Now, as we look through, um, we can see the carb type, which is fiber rich, and then we can look at the different types of carbohydrates and when to eat it. So, as you can see, it's vegetables with different sorts, spinach, carrots, tomatoes, cucumber, all the different sorts of vegetables that we know and when we can eat them. We can eat them often and at any time of day, especially for your vegetarians. Now, if you look at the bottom there, we've got some beans, legumes, and most fruits. Now, it's just to be aware, these selections are more carb-dense, so when including these, be sure not to overeat them. That's where it's important that you stick to just one medium-sized fruit um, rather than lots and lots of um, different sorts of fruits, as they do have more carbohydrate in them. Whole food, whole food starchy. Now, this would include gluten-free breads and pastas, sweet potatoes, quinoa, oats, long grain rice, and these would be the type of starchy foods that you're only allowed during the three hours after exercise. And that would be your post-workout plate. Now, refined sugary foods, which are desserts, fruit juice, processed foods, coke, etc. These, we recommend that you eat them very occasionally, slash rarely, and only if you do eat them during the three hours after exercise. And that actually includes um, dried fruits, which can be very sugary, dates, figs, raisins, and other sorts of dried fruits. Uh, just to reiterate, eat them occasionally, um, very rarely, and only during the three hours after exercise. Now, if you want to lose fat, only have carbohydrates when you earn them. E.g., no exercise, no carbohydrates, other than the fruits and veggies, of course. Habit number five. Eat healthy fats daily. Now, this obviously counteracts the initial um, food pyramid that we're taught from years and years ago. Now, the latest research shows that you should actually try and have 30% of the diet coming from fat. So if you refer to the any time plate, you can see that um, a decent amount of the plate comes from healthy sources of fat. One thing just to mention as well is that the difference between, one of the differences between the anytime and the post-workout plate is that the anytime has more fat in it, whereas the post-workout plate will have less fat in it. That's purely because you don't really want to combine um, amounts of carbohydrate with um, too much fat. It's basically either having one or the other. So in the anytime plates, you've got more fat, less carbohydrate, and in the post-workout, you've got more carbohydrate and less fat. Now the most important thing with fat is that you balance the different sorts, that's saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fat. Saturated fat comes from animal fats, things like eggs, dairy, meats, butter cheeses, uh, coconut oil. Monounsaturated fat comes from different sorts of nuts, macadamias, pecans, um, also olives, olive oil, and avocados. Then polyunsaturated comes from fish oil, hemp seeds, algae oils, safflower oil, uh, walnuts, flax seeds. Brazil nuts. I just like to refer back to fish oil as fish oil is one of the healthiest forms of oil and uh, we recommend that everyone takes some not only for fat loss but also for brain function, um, anti-inflammation therefore if you've got um, joint issues or things like that it helps with those. It, it's pretty much been proven, omega-3 has been proven to help with every disease under the sun and to also help with body fat loss as well. So that's just a brief overview of fats. Now I'd just like to recap on the different habits, the things you should be asking yourself um, as you're eating. First one being, are you eating slowly? So check in with hunger, sit down, relax, take your time, 15 to 20 minutes for a meal is about right, and make sure you stop eating when you're about 80% food full. Sorry. Now the second thing you should ask is, where is the protein dense food? This is every time you're eating. Are you about to eat at least one palm-sized portion of protein-dense food? Women get one palm-sized portion, and men obviously get two palm-sized portions. Third thing to ask is, where are the veggies? Are you about to eat a large portion of veggies? Now, they can be prepared any way you like, 
One serving is about one fist size portion and you should try to eat a few portions per meal. Number four would be where are the carbs? If you have fat to lose but haven't just worked out, eat less pasta, bread, rice and other starchy carbs, opt for a double serving of veggies instead. If you've just worked out, a mix of carb sources is fine. Now, the last thing is where are your fats coming from? Well, today you need um, fats from different sources, so things, things like eggs, meats, fish, natural sources. Now, we do recommend ideally organic, as natural sources as you can, um, you can have, and then you spread these, these things throughout the day. So you're going to get sent a lot of different sorts of recipes. Now, they are classed within any time or post-workout, which will just be PW. So, you remember, the way it works is an anytime meal you can have throughout the day. Now, there are different sorts of meals for breakfast and things like that, but you are able to have an anytime meal at any time throughout the day. And a PW me me meal means you can only have it within three hours of exercising. exercising. So, if you haven't exercised, you stick to anytime meals. So let me just reiterate that. You're going to be sent a lot of different sorts of recipes and you're going to be ongoingly sent a lot of different sorts of recipes. And it's very important that you stick to any time or post-workout meals. If you have any questions at all, please um, do get in contact. I'll be happy to answer all of those. This is obviously the first time you've been introduced to this style of eating and it's going to take some sort of getting used to. Um, but the idea being that you're not going to be by yourself. There's going to be a group of you learning together and being able to help each other. So make sure that you do keep in contact uh, and also when you have any questions, try and um, introduce them to the group as well so that everyone else can learn from everyone's experiences. Thanks and we'll see you at the next seminar.